So the truth of it is we're living in a society today that has, if you will, it's a covenant-breaking society. There's an assignment of Antichrist that is against marriages and family. It literally has in its dogma the destruction of the nuclear family. And so we know that the reason for that is because of what God decreed in the garden would set the earth free and man free and so we're having to contend with these assignments against our life and so every relationship that we have kind of goes through some stages you see us looking down we were such babies at our wedding oh we were really There's babies a few pictures. see where she captured me <laughs> up there and then she winks uh oh that's dangerous they know so, so we want to talk a little bit about the stages didn't he look so young I know I still look young. Honey. You still what look young. What? That's oh, okay. right. It's Valentine's. All right. <laughs> um, so every relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a friendship, um, actually I think goes through these stages of covenant connection. Uh, because because I think that we have to understand that nobody's perfect. How many admit the fact that you're not perfect? Like three people. Okay. How many admit the fact that maybe God may call you to walk with somebody that also is not perfect? And so the first stage is connection. I saw those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, the first stage is connection. That's where you click, where the other person can do no wrong and they seem almost perfect. They say love is blind. Why is that? Because you overlook a lot of stuff. How many have ever heard the word infatuation how many have ever heard the word puppy love how many ever experienced any of that all right husbands why you better raise your hand uh, <laughs> when you fall in love it's just like man they're perfect right okay some of you don't know <laughs> so we all start right. out with a connection and then that connection usually carries us into a commitment which is where we make a commitment to the friendship or a commitment How many to know the long-term relationship without commitment and sacrifice there's no meaning to life that's right and so people sometimes avoid commitment and avoid sacrifice the truth of it is why live if you're not willing to do those things because the only good things in life and the only meaning in life come out of those realities and so somewhere you have to commit, somewhere you have to be willing to sacrifice, somewhere you have to be willing to give or you'll never receive the things that you say you want to. But after commitment, usually at some point comes conflict. Uh-oh. Okay. Now I'm not going to say, uh, are there any married people here? Let me ask this question. Are there any married people here that feel like you've never really ever had a fight? <laughs> we can start one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Any married people that say you've never had a fight? Okay, now, those that are married, who's the one that usually starts the fight? Point your finger. Oh, no, don't point any oh. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chuck's like, oh, man, I'm going to have so much counseling to do after this. <laughs> what, do we, what do we fight about, Dr. Chuck? Now, he's, what do we fight about? Money? For sex? Sex. sex. What else? Family, children. Children. Huh? Jewelry, okay. People fight about a lot of things. But, you, but here, here's the time when, when you, have to, you have to understand is that every good friendship, every relationship, every marriage goes through times of conflict. Now, I have to say, when we first got married, I had never seen my parents fight. Never. And I, like, lived in stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Bishop and Mom would fight I'm not looking and at get you, mad I'm at each saying. other and get happy all in the same period of time. But I never saw my parents fight, so I never saw my parents resolve a fight. So when we had our first fight, I was devastated. I thought the whole world was over. I thought our marriage was over and we'd only been married like a week. Okay. Hey, and know. yes, he did start the fight, okay? So I'm just going to be Sometimes. clear here, okay? Uh, but you know what? There's something that's, that's healthy. Now, there's in constructively fighting, even in letting your children see you resolve and make up, okay? Because I didn't have that. Now, I, I said this to my parents later, and I said, well, you guys never fought. And my parents looked at, looked at me like I'd fallen out of a tree, they just always did it behind, the, behind closed doors. So I never saw them get upset with each other, but I also never saw them resolve anything. And my parents have now been married 60, 
64 years, I think this year, 63, 64 years this year, and they're happily married. Amen? They're very, very happily married. I will tell you, they're going in to get the, the COVID shots. I kind of, I kind of wasn't sure about that for them. And I, th they were sitting in the car and they were getting ready to go in and get their shots. And I said, well, mom and dad, you need to know that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of side effects and you need to be watching for this and this. And I read them off a little list. And one of the things that was on the list was it could cause sterility. And my mom, my dad's 80, 87 and my mom's 83. And she said, well, honey, your dad and I have just about given up any hope of having any more children. So we're not really worried about that. Okay. I think they were waiting <laughs> to see how the first batch turned <laughs> out before they made that decision. But. but listen, you can go through conflict and actually be stronger after conflict. Sometimes I think my husband starts a fight just so that we can get to kiss and make up. Uh-oh. Well. <laughs> he won't admit it, but every, yeah, no. I just put it like that. There's always a test, you know, to everything. And so somewhere you're going to go through a test and you're going to have to decide how you're going to work through to get to the other side, which comes to the next word that's real important. In the midst of conflict, you have to make a choice. And how many know the truth of it is, as much as love is a feeling, love is also what? A choice. Just like it says in scripture every day, take up your cross, and that's not love and marriage, but take up your cross every day. You gotta choose into love. You have to choose into your attitude, your approach how you're going to view that person, how you're going to view your future, how you're going to work at what you're called to. But the truth of it is, when you go through a test, the reason it's a test and called a test is because you're supposed to come up with some answers and because you can make choices. We used to have multiple choice or true and false. You got to find out what you really believe, what you're willing to do, and the choices that you make determine whether you pass or fail, right? And so those are the things that we're constantly having to engage in. We talk about when we do a marriage ceremony, honey, that whatever it took to obtain your bride is what you want to do to walk out your life. Because the same romance, the same heart, the same winning them, the same being the best for them, the same trying to do for them shouldn't change. If you want the feeling to stay, then you've got to keep doing the things that bring that feeling. And so here we've been 40 years in love, but why? But you have to choose, right? Because in the midst of conflict, you can choose not to forgive. You can choose to stay mad. You can choose to have a bad attitude. You can choose to have a grudge. And I think that it's been surprising to us that, that sometimes when people are come into a place of marriage counseling, it really does come down to this thing is that they refuse to choose to forgive. And sometimes it can go back 10 years, 20 years, 40 years that they're holding something against their spouse and just choosing not to forgive. How many of us Christians, we don't get a choice whether or not we forgive? We're actually required to forgive. How much more we have to w live in a place of forgiveness with our spouse that we've made a commitment to, to live with and, the rest honey, of our lives? And honey, forgiveness isn't a feeling, it's a choice as well. That's right. You choose to forgive. You let go of the grudge. Now, we always say there's a difference between forgiveness and then trust and trustworthiness. So that's a part of restoration. So if there's been a breach or a break of trust, you may have to work at proving yourself and walking through the process to get to restoration and you have to choose into it. That's why you're trustworthy or you're not. And so if you break trust with the government, they'll take away your privileges, they'll, they'll fine you or they may confine you because, hey, you're not gonna have that driver's license. You're not gonna have the right to vote. You're not gonna be able to walk and go wherever you want to because you've proven to be untrustworthy. But with a Christian, we have to love and forgive and then give that space and place and grace for somebody now to step through the right process for restoration to take place. What is restoration? I can trust you again. I can walk this out with you. I can love you. I, I can connect rightly with you. And so it gives an opportunity for that to take place if we make the right choices along the way. Let me just say, honey, that we talked about infatuation is when they can do no wrong. You know, when you're in conflict, you know, you begin to think they can do no right or they've never done any right. In fact, I've been in marriage counseling, Dr. Chuck, you know this, where at one point they say, we've never loved each other. We've never done, it's been, everything is as dark and bleak as you could ever think. And yet we were there for a lot of their life and we know that's not true. But at that moment, everything's dark colored. Everything is, is terrible. They globalize. And so 
the truth of it is they had a, a beautiful life that was like a lot of other marriages that have ups and downs and they've had conflicts but at that moment of desperation and pain they can't see anything good at that time just like when you're infatuated you can't see anything bad at that moment they're just perfect in every way in some senses but what you got to do is return to that grace and that covering and love that covers even a multitude of sin or weaknesses. And friendships will go through these stages as well. So how many have ever had to try to work something out with a friend? Okay. So you'll have to, you have to kind of walk through these processes of love and forgiveness. And uh, we're really blessed. We've been walking in covenant with a lot of our leadership team for uh, 20, 25, 30, more than 30 years. And it's not because we walk through things with never having a disagreement. They're all perfect, honey. <laughs> it's never that we walk through and, and don't have disagreements. It's that we've chosen to learn how to walk in a covenant commitment.